everybody. So today we are going to be talking about a special topic, and that is how every diabetic is a data scientist. And here's why. So let's start out with what is a diabetic. So specifically, I am talking about a type 1 diabetic in this video, although I can actually see how type 2 is also in this category. So if you're not aware, type 2 means that you make some insulin. These are more common, and most people that are type 2, they usually take a pill or something like that to help regulate their blood sugars, whereas a type 1 has to take shots or they have something called an insulin pump that basically takes insulin and puts it into their body. So when you are a type 1, it means that your body, i.e. your pancreas, does not make any insulin. So insulin is a hormone. It regulates the sugar in your bloodstream. Everything you eat, whether it is a giant piece of cake or if it is an apple, both have sugar in them. Doesn't matter if it's natural or not natural. Most sugar is natural. Sweet and low and, and fake sugars don't affect the blood sugar uh, as much, some of them do, but they're synthetic, they're not real. The other thing that contains sugar is carbohydrates. A lot of diabetics have to watch how many carbohydrates they eat because carbohydrates turn into sugar. This is something a lot of people don't realize. Anytime you eat a piece of cake, you're getting a double dose of sugar. You're getting the sugar that's naturally in the icing, but you're also getting sugar from the actual cake batter. So when you're a diabetic, hmm, you have to understand how to read those labels on the side of everything that you buy. And more complicated, you have to understand the carb ratio and the sugar ratio in an apple. Apples are different sizes. So you also have to understand, depending on the volume of an apple, how much sugar or carbohydrates are in that. The reason you have to calculate that is because you have to balance it with how much insulin you're going to take to counteract that sugar. That sounds like a lot of calculation. That might be why I think that every diabetic is hiding a data scientist. And it's because when you are a diabetic, you have to constantly be doing calculations in your head from all ages. I've known many diabetics that were under the age of two, four, six. That's another misconception. There is something called a juvenile diabetic. Literally all that means is you were a kid when you got diabetes. And try telling a little kid they're not allowed to eat the candy from Halloween or Easter or whatever holiday you have that's giving you candy. It's not that fun. And those kids are probably doing more math, more calculations than their peers. It goes with diabetics of all ages. So not only are you doing a calculation on the food and how much insulin you have to take to counteract that food, but you also have to take into consideration how much exercise you're going to perform that day or how much water you're ingesting. You have to plan if you're going on a long walk, how many steps are you going to take? Do you need to take insulin before you go or do you need to take a snack so you don't go low? Now, I'm using some words here that you might not be familiar with. Low means that a diabetic's blood sugar has gone to a level that is not healthy. It means that they need to then eat something that has sugar in it. So here comes one of my pet peeves. If you see somebody that's a diabetic eating a piece of candy, don't be judgmental. I know some people see that and say, oh, you're a diabetic, you shouldn't be eating that. Their blood sugar might be low. Stop getting on their case. The other thing is blood sugar can go very high. That doesn't necessarily mean that the diabetic is a bad diabetic or that they eat lots of sugar and candy and, and carbohydrates. It may mean that they're sick or it may mean that they're having a bad day. A lot of diabetics, their mood, because your insulin is a hormone, right? Your stress levels go up, your hormones start changing. Same thing with a diabetic, except they don't have anything helping to regulate. So if a diabetic may get really upset, their blood sugar could go way up 
or way down. So these are some things just to keep in mind when you're talking to a diabetic. Here are some of the things that I want to lay straight. So diabetics do not necessarily look sick. I have had people say, oh, that diabetic, that girl's a diabetic. She doesn't look sick. Okay, does that, why does that matter? <laughs> Um, there's other things where there is a preconceived notion that because diabetics have these fluctuations in their blood sugar, that they can make any excuse to get out of work or to get out of doing something. They just have a free excuse to go get a snack. None of those are true. I also know a lot of parents and family members of diabetics that are so scared about allowing their students or even their adult children to go out into the world when they're diabetics because you have to constantly plan. You have to make sure that you understand all of the different environmental factors, all of your eating factors and your insulin factors before you step one foot out of your door. This can make some people very scared to do so. Look, this is why I'm saying Every diabetic is a data scientist. You got this. You know what your body needs and you know how to take care of it. Don't ever let anyone tell you you can't do it. Don't let that stop you. You understand math and calculations better than a lot of other people. Even the brightest data scientist doesn't have to understand or worry about the same calculations that you have to worry about. And that's because your life is dependent on you getting those calculations right. All right, so let's think about what makes a data scientist. Data scientist is somebody that is really detail oriented, somebody that is constantly looking at data and trying to understand how to make it better, how to find additional meaning in it. I know there are a lot of other things that data scientists need to know, but let's just keep it simple for this. How is that any different than a diabetic? A diabetic is constantly looking at their blood sugars and the different trends in their exercise routine or the food that they ate or the feelings that they were having or if they were sick, they were trying to understand why the data, i.e. their blood sugars, are what they are. How can they improve them? How can they make them better? This is something that regularly occurs to a diabetic. It's very similar to a data scientist, don't you think? So that's one reason that I wanted to make this comparison is there are so many diabetics out there that might be struggling with, what do I do with this thing that life has given me? And how can I use the skills that I have to do better for myself, for my community, for my world. And I'm here to tell you that I believe that you are a secret data scientist. You are a data superhero, where not only do you understand data better than most people, but your life depends on it. You can use it for good. You can use these skills that you may not even realize that you have to go into the data science field, help people understand what it means to be a diabetic and understand data and how you have a specific and unique interpretation and relationship with data because of this being a part of your everyday life and something that I am very scared to say, but I think it's important to say. Today is my 30th anniversary of being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. I got it when I was four and I was told by the age of eight that I wouldn't make it past 30. And I have lived every day of my life to prove them wrong. It's not okay to treat diabetics differently. And 
it took me a while to realize that I had a special skill. I had a special relationship with data and analytics that a lot of other people didn't have. And it's because of my diabetes. And diabetes is a big part of my life. And I don't share it with people. Most people watching this video, if you know me personally, you probably had no idea I was a diabetic. And I hide it. I go to great pains to hide it. And it's because of how I've been treated in the past. When people found out, I am not sick. I am not weaker. I am not worse off or any less than you are. And if you are somebody that has a diabetic in your life or you are a diabetic, I really hope you share this video with them because it's taken a long time for me to realize that I need to share my story. And I need to empower people that may be struggling to know that they're good enough. They're better. They can do things that a lot of other people can't. And that is something that we want to celebrate, that we should celebrate that people with differences have special abilities, superpowers, that we shouldn't squish or hide. So this is my story. It's not over by any means. And if I'm being honest, I'm really scared to make this video because I don't want to be judged. I don't want people to think that I'm less than they are because I was dealt a bad hand. I was diagnosed and it didn't run in my family. Nobody knew why I got it. I was studied in many studies because apparently I have a very rare form of diabetes and it made me get familiar with the scientific method and hospitals and the medical field very early on in my life. And while I wish I didn't have this, I also know that I am the person I am because of it. I've heard many people that are so kind reach out to me after watching my videos and say that they can see the passion and the excitement that I have for what I do. A lot of that comes from my very intimate relationship with data. And a lot of other diabetics have that too. And if I can encourage any of you, whether you're a diabetic or you have one in your family, you can do this. You can be a data scientist. You can get into a data field of some sort. If that's not your gig, if you have other passions, great, pursue them. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. But I'm here to tell you that I don't know many diabetics in the data field. That doesn't mean they're not out there. And if you're one of them, please reach out. I would love to start a community with all of us. But I also suspect that a lot of diabetics, especially growing up during the time that I did, didn't have a lot of resources, didn't have a lot of support structures. So if there is one thing that I can impart to you is that I truly believe that you have superpowers and that you can use them for good. And I really hope that this video does not turn around and bite me because it's taken months for me to work up the courage to make it. And I just hope that this helps in some way, that it reaches that one person 
whoever you may be, because I know when I was a kid and trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, I didn't know. A lot of kids don't know, but I also had this additional complication of diabetes where I didn't know if I could or if I should. And the answer is you should and you can. And I hope that by sharing my story that that helps. All right, so with ugly crying face out of the way, I really hope that this video has stirred something within you and that you can share this with others and it helps them as well. With that, thanks for watching.